A notable story just coming out from the New York Times saying that the lawyer who offered dirt on Hillary Clinton to the Trump campaign in that famous 2016 Trump Tower meeting had closer ties to the Kremlin than she has led on previously. In this story, she says that she had been actively communicating with the Office of the Russian Prosecutor General since 2013, three years before that Trump Tower meeting. She also uses this language. She says that I am an informant. Remarkable thing to hear from the Russian lawyer who got that meeting uh, with senior members of the Trump campaign. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell. He serves on the House Intelligence Committee, which of course has been central to the Russia investigation. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Of course. Good morning, Jim. First, let me ask for your reaction to this story. Uh, this lawyer uh, saying that she had much closer ties to the Kremlin than we knew. Of course she was a Russian spy, Jim. Everything about the setup for this meeting that Donald Trump Jr. knew was that she was a Russian spy. It was a Russian lawyer connected to the top prosecutor in Russia who had dirt on their political opponent. That should have raised alarms for the Trump team. It didn't. Instead, it actually got them the meeting sooner. You saw in that email exchange that Donald Trump Jr moved heaven and earth to make sure that that meeting could happen and even suggested that he'd prefer if the dirt could wait until closer to election day. This just shows me, Jim, that it was very, very irresponsible for the House Republicans to shut down our investigation. We learn more and more information every day, whether it's this lawyer, Natalia Veselnitskaya, whether it's the information about Michael Cohen, or the witness who we heard from earlier in the week, Christopher Wiley at Cambridge Analytica, who told us about a number of connections that Cambridge Analytica, the Trump data firm, had with Russians. So we should get back to work as a bipartisan committee to make sure we can tell the American people what happened. Did your investigation turn up similar details to what we're hearing here now in this New York Times story about Veselnitskaya's ties to the Russian government? We learned a lot about uh, Natalia Veselnitskaya and others at the Trump Tower meeting, Jim. Uh, it was our hope that the Republicans would join us uh, as they had agreed to early in the investigation to release the transcripts to the public. If the public were able to see the transcripts, they would see a number of disturbing ties to the Trump team and the Russian government. Uh, but the, Russia, the Republicans have chosen to bury that evidence. That will not be a part of what the public will be seeing. And I, I think that, uh, again, uh, shirks our duty to tell the public what happened, how we were so vulnerable, who was responsible, and what we're going to do to make sure this never happens again. The president, as you know, has said and continues to say repeatedly there is no collusion. His supporters as well. They say that this investigation of at least the collusion question ha has gone nowhere. But it was interesting when James Comey was doing his interviews, including to CNN, he said it's possible. He, he left open the possibility based on what he knew. That, of course, is not decisive. But in your view, based on the intelligence you've seen, the interviews you've done, is that question still open? It certainly is, but most of the arrows point toward collusion. And, and you know, criminally, it would be conspiracy uh, mm -hmm. to defraud the United States. But broadly, as, as you and I would know it, I don't know what else you would call it when the Russians hack your opponent's emails. They offer those, they offer dirt to your family. You stand on a stage as a candidate and invite the, the Russians to conduct further hacking. And then you amplify what they put out to the public. And then once you're elected, you do all you can to work with them and pay them back. To me, where I come from, that looks like collusion. Now, Robert Mueller, his, his investigation is continuing. And based on CNN's reporting, based on the kinds of questions he's asking of some witnesses, the kinds of documents he's seeking, it appears that he's at least going down this line of inquiry. And, and again, as you say, we should use the term conspiracy because collusion is not actually a crime, uh, not really a legal term here. But, but, but this information about Veselnitskaya, would you expect that the special counsel would be investigating or have investigated how deep her ties are to the Russian government? Yes, Jim. And if you look at what the special counsel has done so far, uh, I have every reason to believe uh, that they are being just as aggressive in investigating what the Russians did as the Russians were in trying to meddle in our elections. They have uh, been able to, I, I think, pursue all the relevant documents, uh, the communication logs, bank records, travel records uh, from the press reports that we've seen. Now, that's something that our committee, uh, the Republicans with the subpoena power, were not willing to do. We ran a take them at their word investigation. People came in, they sat in the chair, they gave us an answer, and then we said, great, thanks, we're not going to do anything to see if there's records to 
either corroborate what you're saying or contradict what you're saying. But it does look like Bob Mueller will be able to run this down. And Jim, let me just say, what Bob Mueller tells the world will only be what he can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the highest standard in the law. So it may be the case that he learns something from a foreign source that you may know to be true, but if you can't prove it, you can't ever tell the world. We were not in that position. We had a responsibility to tell the American public what we found as, as it related to the Trump team working with the Russians. We didn't have that high legal burden of proof. And, show, and so it's really uh, irresponsible that we stop doing our work and the public won't know. The president, again yesterday in this freewheeling interview uh, on the Fox Morning program, again raised the possibility uh, that, he, that he might interfere with, with the Justice Department or, or perhaps with Robert Mueller. Do you believe that Robert Mueller needs legal protection, legislation to protect him from being fired by the president? And Jim, the president already has interfered from the work he did with Chairman Nunes to allow uh, the White House and the Republican chairman to interfere in our investigation from firing James Comey to the constant threats to Jeff Sessions, Rod Rosenstein, and Bob Mueller. What we can do now is to pass the bipartisan legislation that Chairman Grassley on the Senate Judiciary Committee has put forward and that Republicans here in Congress have an opportunity to put forward because there will be future presidents who will need to be investigated for their conduct. And the best thing we can do is say that no president is above the law and no president should be able to fire their investigator. Congressman Eric Swalwell, thanks very much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, my pleasure.